So we start of a new week and focus is going to be um, forever on the US dollar, uh, we've got FOMC minutes and US retail sales slated for this week uh, are the standout data points for the US, um, whereby we have UK CPI and the labour market data uh, for the pound there, and then for the Aussie dollar, we'll have the labour market data as well, and we have, of course, the RBNZ uh, coming up this week, and we'll have China activity data, all key focuses on the calendar. Now, with regards to this dollar, we're starting out to bid, and there are prospects into the low 103s if we can exceed last week's high. Uh, the structural point that the bears will need to see broken is 102 spot 83. Um, but continuing with the upside while well, being on the front side of that full trend now, the prospects are, as I said, into these low 103s. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of a lot of uh, reason not to presume that this is going to continue higher. The chart is not um, presenting much in the way of resistance um, on a break of that level there. I'll turn that red for resistance. If we can get above 102.92 again, um, then that should be clearing the way at least for a test through 103 for uh, the days ahead. So what we'll do now is we'll get into the, the day count of the three day cycle. And we'll look for our look for our pairs that are presenting the most probable setups for the day ahead. So on that note, with the Dixie, we are on day three of the three-day cycle. So if we do see a move higher, potentially from London, um, we're now sort of away from the Tokyo Open, but um, we may see a foundation for a move up in these next couple of sessions. And there could be prospects later on in the day uh, for a pullback in line with day three um, long squeeze. And in that respect, if we measure the, um, the weekly charts rally, Current levels of this range, low, low and higher, low and high, uh, 101.60s on the downside. If we were to creep higher um, into this 103 area, and that brings us up to round about 10 in the late 101.70s. Um, or 80s, depending on how high we get up. And in doing so, and in doing so, that we'll see the price of the Dixie heading lower into this length. So a break of last week's range is what we are um, anticipating over the course of um, well, potentially this week or maybe a couple of weeks if that is the that's going to be the outcome. Um, resistance here and pulling back. So let's move to the euro in that respect then. That's heavily weighted to the Dixie Index, uh, day two on Friday. All right, so let's clean up the chart.
No, no, no. So we're on day three um, on the euro dollar in anticipation of a correction up into uh, two days of sell off there. Prospects of a move in to test last week's lows. Breaking last week's low could seal the deal. How that might play out, a couple of scenarios. It's either going to break out, uh, fail and pull back. Or it's going to break out, pull back and continue. Or it's just going to go sideways and maybe move up. That would be the uh, most probable. If, if we can't get a break of these lows, then perhaps we're setting up for a, a move up. And on the calendar, there is nothing slated for today for the euro. Assumption day. Okay, so we can have a euro dollar on the watch list as a day three uh, prospect for a move up. Dollar CAD. So Dollar CAD is still on the front side of this bullish trend. And the level to crack in that respect in terms of a swing trend outlook would be. 133.54 So nearer term we broke these higher lows and we're coming back up into the peak formation which could be the last ditch effort perhaps from the from the bulls. And we'll be looking for a shortened opportunity. Potentially within here. Put this area as support. So this is a day three first red day set up um, to pressure the support structure horizontal and dynamic. And targets on the downside for a break of these lows. Last month's highs and last week's highs are also in my shot. So 133.50 at the extreme stops below. Prospects there for 133.20. And looking at the calendar for looking at the calendar for Canada, CPI will be on the 16th of August. So a strong number there would stir up sentiment around the uh, Bank of Canada, Bank of Canada, uh, which is currently in wait and see mode. But uh, regardless of that, Monday will be the opening range. 
So it may offer this offer us the high of the week. Um, if we were to sell off, given that the path of least resistance is likely to the downside, given the upgraded structure. So we can move that dollar CAD into our day three watch list. And we can also have it as a first red day, which is a signal day. Um, so that there's some confidence there with the day count. The more confidence is the, uh, the better, so we'll put that up to the top of the list. And also worth noting that we've mitigated a fair bit of that price imbalance on the daily chart. Uh, so perhaps that was enough fuel on the daily chart to see this price start to break down. So now moving over to Dollar Swiss. Rejection um, from resistance on Friday. And we've got the follow through on the hour of the chart here in the open. That could well be depending on which broker you're with. Um, this is A cap down here, far under. Showing the same thing. Okay, so regardless, um, we've got a couple of days here in the cycle, so the one day, two day, three today, Monday, perhaps more of the same. Um, failing at resistance. Last week's high as resistance. Last week's low. It's the target. And it's a structural point that guards a new lower. As being the higher low of that range regarding last week's levels. So bears, we might have another pop at dollar yen on Monday um, as a day two. So this turns to day one. Making dollar yen, yen at day two. Still on the front side of this trend. We haven't broken any structures yet. Draw out the broad brush, pull it in tightly. What from those that will argue that it should be wick to wick? So last week's and last month's highs are acting as resistance. And a very long rally there. Due for a pullback, will we get that, finally get that pullback on Monday and Tuesday perhaps?
got a Fibonacci to the lows and the highs. So we've got a nice space here down to 38.2. We'll balance between these three candles. And this area aligns the structure here and here on the low time frames. As a, an objective in the near term. The daily ATR is twenty five. So that puts us in range of the what thirty eight point two. So that's a day three opportunity towards 143.60s. Day three. Euro yen. So on Friday it melted away as expected. Um, it was a day two on Friday of the three-day cycle it's day three of breakout traders uh, on the long side which gave the prospects of a long squeeze so that was the thesis on Friday um, uh, and that should be day three and we'll go through this day count just to make it clear um, if we start from last week, so this will be day two, day three, turning back to day one. Um, so if we come back to last week, so day one, day two, day three, day one, day two, day three, day one, day two, day three. One day two day three day one day two day three day three turn back to day one day two day two continuation or here again driving potentially into these longs. We've got last month's highs. profile so this volume profile is showing us that we've drifted down through these lower volume nodes coming into higher volume nodes these may give us an area of support So just looking at that trend then, so those are the volume areas, potential support areas. This over here aligns with structure from over here. We've got last month's high here as well. I'll put that on there. On the board as well. So 158. Three. Right in the middle of a low volume noise, so that can quite easily be taken out down into the low 157.70s. The daily ATR on this is 137.
which gives prospects of a move all the way into the ESL. So what do we see on Monday or between Monday and Tuesday? Let's see what we see. One step further and mark our Fibonacci on the range. We've got our 38.2 lining up in the first target area and the 58, uh, 50% reversion of the trend coming up in at the ATR area. 157.50. lines with these highs here as well. Okay, so this is a day two continuation. And we'll move that up as one of the hotter ones. Now looking to gold. Gold is jamming in for the most of the day, end of the low. Prospects will be pulled back. We were looking for the continuation to the downside. It gave us a couple of opportunities on Friday to short. It was all very uh, um, short term stuff. Then consolidation really. Uh, so still front side of the bearish trend. We're at last week's lows and just above last month's as well. This area down here. Have we started to consolidate and eventuate into a pullback? Is the question. Turn off this inside bar stuff. And we'll mark our Fibonacci for the pullback. We've got a 50% mean reversion area around this wiki. Placement on the chart, uh, 1928-ish. at the 61.8 so we ended Friday lower so a series of one two three so last week's opening range got one two three pushes out of that opening range into Friday out of that opening range, I should say, down towards last month's lows. We tried to come up, faded, faded, in both attempts. Are we now working these lows to come up? So, with the bullish thesis. Day one, today day two, We've got the structure here, 
So a break of 1915 would be encouraging for the bulls for a initial target up into Friday shorts 1920 and above. And in doing so, that will get us onto the backside of that bearish trend and start paving the way for a sizable correction. A sizable correction into this weekly bearish impulse. A continuation, on the other hand, on the front side of that trend will take us into last month's high and lows test this psychological area 1900 but for the immediate future the bias is bullish over to cable so these are the markings from last week nice entry but no cigar on that consolidated day really um, start by pulling out to the weekly chart Got that M formation so that's worth noting the next line up here So prospects on a pullback on a weekly coming in close to last month's lows 2650s that's my continuation in that regard one twenty five ninety on the downside hide. up on Friday. If we are to continue correcting, we've got 38.2 on 2720s. So the version 127.40s, 61.8, 127.60, thereabouts. So we've already come up into that area. And it does appear to be a broken down market. Came out of last week's open range with an initial break. Pull back, fake out, fast move away from trap traders below those lows Frank. and this is really looking like a continuation to the downside um, but that kind of goes against the strong sorry uh, weak dollar theme or thesis That would be expected to weigh on the dollar. 
elsewhere we seem to be set up uh, bullish to some regard dollar yen not so much interesting I mean we've got UK labor market data out on the 15th perhaps uh, an inside day today so no real bias as well yeah bearish really so shorts in cable day three the one day two this is day three day three continuation it's the third push, in, push into the lows of last week one two three we broken structure last month's lows at the start of august failed to really come up so perhaps another this is a weak low then there are prospects for a downside continuation line the broader broader trend okay sterling again sell stops on the downside below 183.22 this will be day two so day two continuation to the downside targets are going to be uh, that 183.20 in sell stops below very wiki um, potential low here potential support structure area So technically we're still in a bullish trend. That is a target area for sure.
Okay. Right, Australian dollar started to make its move. That's called. That's Friday. No cigar. Um, day one, day two. So thesis is for a correction. Day three correction. So failing below this low here, potentially coming up. Breakout traders in the market, shorting below here, below here, below here. Target break even stops and so forth. Side target area fifty sixty one eight on the four hour chart. Targeting M formations neckline. So we have this M formation here on the four hour. Doing so will be coming to the back side of that trend. This leaves prospects of a continuation into the Aussie labour market data. Later this week, 15th and the 17th, will be key, key dates for the Aussie. And that leaves us a similar situation for. Kiwi. Got resistance here on the four hour target. Stops by there below, above and uh, imbalance in this displacement. Um, One eight. Talk about the balance. Sixty sixties. Day three. Correction to the upside. So Kiwi then, day two, continuation of Friday's peak low. Thesis is to the upside to target of these highs. So I got Kiwi, nice that one here. On the NAS, NAS, NAS. And then similar scenario for 
now and S and P. S and P is giving us a very free correction. The US 30 is a first green day. And to cross it again. Close the bunch cigar. Friday. So Aussie, Aussie yen then it's a broken down market breaking the structure. Fifteen minute chart here, prospects are a continuation to the downside. There's going to be a correction before the collapse. And that brings us to a conclusion of the watch list for the day ahead. Uh, 13th of August, Monday 14th.